Welcome to the Thousand Smiles EMR Station System Overview and Tutorial. In this presentation, we'll provide an overview of the system, we'll discuss the registration, monitor, and station roles, and the corresponding applications will be defined. The flow of a patient and the role of runners will be introduced. The focus will be on the operation of the station application. Other presentations will cover the registration application and the monitor application. As patients flow through the system, they are assigned to stations based on the patient routing slip. The patient routing slip is defined by two things. The category of the patient assigned at registration time, for example, new cleft, dental, orthodontic, returning cleft, and so on. The other component of the routing slip is caused by changes made at a station. In our clinics, ENT will be the initial stop for cleft patients, and they will add additional stations to the patient routing slip based on their assessment of the patient. That said, other stations have the ability to modify the routing slip as well. The station can be in one of three states, active, which means it's seeing a patient, waiting, which means it's not seeing a patient and it's waiting for a runner to bring a patient to that station, or away. Away is the station exists, but the staff is out to lunch or on a break of some sort. Our EMR is based on Android tablets. Um, we're specifically focusing on the Kindle Fire HD 10. Um, for more information on how to operate um, the Kindle Fire HD 10, uh, we're talking about basic things like how to turn it on, turn it off, and so on. Um, use the URL on the screen to access a manual. Um, tablets are used in our EMR to register patients outside and to check in patients at stations as they are seen by dentists, x-ray, ENT, and so on. Um, we're, we're, we also um, strive to extend this system to provide access to actual chart data. Uh, at this stage, uh, we're focusing right now on registration and patient routing. The status of the clinic is displayed on TV screens which are located throughout the clinic. These screens depict the status of each station, whether it's active, waiting, or away. It also shows the patients which are scheduled to be seen in order of arrival. This information that's running on the TV screens can also be accessed by an application on the tablets. Here's a screenshot of a TV monitor. Um, showing the state of x-ray and orthodontics uh, for a, a clinic. We see two lines for each. One x-ray uh, is labeled Rayos X1, the second Rayos X2, and then we have two ortho lines. Each of these stations is busy. Uh, this can be determined by noticing that the child at the head of the line is in green. This is the child that's in the chair at the moment. Um, the x-ray line is also showing uh, three patients waiting. The one in yellow is the next one to be serviced. So when the green patient is done, the child in yellow will be the next one brought to the station by a runner. The TV monitors also help our parents and patients gain an understanding of where their child is in the system and the status of the clinic and how long they might have to wait. So that's one of the reasons, in fact, it's one of the main reasons we have these TV monitors throughout the clinic is to provide situational awareness to the patients and their families. Registration volunteers will use a registration application to register patients as they arrive outside. And there's a separate video describing the registration system. Runners will refer to the monitor application, which is on the TVs, to determine the state of a station and when and where to take patients for care. Dentist, orthodontist, surgery screening, ENT, and so on will use the station application, which is the focus of this presentation, to sign patients in and out of chairs, view medical history, view or modify the routing slip, and in the future access the digital chart data for the patients that they provide care for. 
Now let's talk about clinic stations. A station is a place to which a patient is taken by a runner and it's where care is given by a dentist or, or so on. Uh, examples, a dental chair, an ortho chair, x-ray, surgery screening, speech, ENT, audiology. Uh, multiple stations for a service such as dental um, will exist whenever two or more patients can receive that service simultaneously. Um, we typically will run several dental chairs because we have the ability to provide dental care to multiple patients. Each one of those will be a station. In a clinic where we had three dental chairs, they would be numbered dental one, dental two, dental three. Uh, the stations must be determined before the clinic um, and before the first patient is seen and registered. Uh, the patients are checked in and checked out using the station application that we're describing here when they arrive and leave the station respectively. So again, tablets are used to register patients outside. Uh, runners will refer to TV monitors to determine which stations are waiting for a patient. Uh, if the top child in the line is yellow, that means the station is waiting and that will be the patient that's taken by the runner uh, to the station. At the station, the patient will be checked in using this application, the station application, and then the TV monitors will show the station is busy. And this will be indicated by the child that was just checked in displaying in green. Once the patient has been seen, he or she has checked out, again, using the station application, and then the station uh, on the monitors will revert back to yellow, uh, indicating the next child to be brought up. Uh, so the lines that are scheduling now, the algorithm will place children into, is based on the classification of the patient, uh, the time of arrival of the patient, and the length of the lines at the time the scheduling function is performed. Uh, briefly, if there's you know three dental lines and one of them is empty, the next dental child will get placed into that line. Um, outside, they will be given a category which is one of the following: new cleft. This will be a child that's a year or so, year or less in age and has never seen someone about a cleft problem. Uh, we we have returning cleft patients that come back for care after the initial surgery. Uh, orthodontic patients, dental patients, and then there's a catch-all category called other, which uh, is used to um, register patients that don't fit the other four categories. Um, this classification is made outside at the time of registration. Uh, once that classification is assigned, the system will create a routing slip internally. Um, dental patients will be sent to x-ray and then to dental. Cleft patients will be sent to ENT. Orthodontic patients will be sent to an ortho station. And uh, other patients will also be sent to ENT. ENT's role in this will be to finish manually creating a routing slip for that patient based on their assessment. Um, the routing slip uh, can be modified by any when using the station application as desired. Um, and then the scheduling software will use the routing slip to move kids in and out of lines as they uh, get checked out at stations. So um, this routing slip is basically the, the, the basis of the scheduling that the child will um, receive by the system as they visit the station that day. Um, as a station, you can select patients out of line. You don't necessarily have to follow the scheduling algorithm. Um, we, we try our best to follow a simple heuristic that puts kids in the shortest lines based on time of arrival, but there might be times when you want to override that for some reason, and the system will allow you to do that, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Okay, so to review, active station is one that has a patient in a chair and is being seen. On monitors, it's green. Um, the waiting station has no patient in the chair but it's staffed and waiting for a runner to bring the next patient up. The uh, station that's away is one that has been marked as being at lunch or on a break. Um, these states are directly changed at the chair using the station application by checking patients in and out and, and going away. 
the, there's the functionality for doing that in the station app. And again, the monitors show the state of your station. Uh, if it's green, you're active. If it's yellow, you're waiting. And if it's showing a, a return time, you're away, um, perhaps at lunch. When a patient arrives, you check them in using the tablet and you become active. When you're done working with a patient, you check them out. That puts you in waiting state. The tablet will display the next patient to be seen. Uh, then when that patient's brought up, you check them in. Basically, you're in a loop. Check in, check out, check in, check out, check in, check out. And this will continue all day long until all the patients have been seen. So let's go in more detail through the flow of the station application, starting with the arrival of a child and including things like going away. Um, to start, you need to launch the application if it's not already launched. Um, this is done by clicking the appropriate icon on the Android desktop. Um, there's three applications, Registration, Station, and Monitor. The Station application, which is the concern of this presentation, is identified by a rotary logo in blue and a folder with a medical symbol as shown on the screen here. So clicking on that will launch this application. And this is a typical view of what the desktop will look like on the Android tablet. The arrows are pointing to the three apps that we support. The one in the middle on this screen is the station app that you want to select when you're running uh, this application at a chair or a station. Uh, Mexico has regulations that are similar to HIPAA. They require each user of the system be identifiable with a unique login. And we're also tracking accesses to the data of the patient. So uh, we will know that Volunteer X looked at this part of patient Y's chart. Um, to log in, use the same username and password that you use to register as a volunteer on our volunteer site. Um, if you don't yet have a volunteer account, create one, bring the username and password. Um, you'll need that to sign on to the tablet. Um, if you don't remember your username or password, try to clean that up before showing up to the clinic. But if you're at the clinic and you can't log in, see someone, either a board member or area leader for assistance. Um, you can change your, your password uh, up to the day before the clinic starts, which typically is going to be a Wednesday for us. Um, after that, we'll be um, exporting the usernames and passwords and using them at the clinic. Um, it may not be necessary to say this, but don't use someone else's username or password and don't share yours for somebody else to use. Beyond all the security implications, when if we were asked to audit accesses to patient data um, and somebody else was using your username, you'll be the one that's attributed to that access. Um, you, you'd rather not have that be the case. So you make sure to use your own username and login when registering uh, or signing into the system. Here's the screen for logging in. Pretty simple. Username, password, click the sign in button. Uh, if you enter in the wrong username or password, it'll tell you about it and then you'll be asked to enter it again. After you've logged in, um, you'll be given a screen to indicate uh, to the system what station you're at. Uh, the tablets can be used at any station, but when you're at a station, you need to tell the, the system where you're at. So um, again, these stations are predetermined before the start of the clinic. We can't change them once the clinic has started. And it's important for you to collect the station that you're actually at, because that's where the kids will be brought to. Um, here's a selector that shows a clinic with four dental chairs, two x-ray chairs, two ortho chairs, two ENT chairs, two audiology chairs, two surgery screening chairs. Um, if you're an ortho station, you're gonna select the appropriate ortho um, button. Uh, it'll ask you to confirm this. Click yes if it's uh, correct. If not, you click the wrong button, click no, and you Try again, clicking the, the right button. This will continue until you click yes. Uh, once you've selected the station, you'll be taken to a screen 
where you will work for the remainder of the day. You'll use this screen to check in patients, check out patients, go away, look at the medical history, view the editing, view and edit the routing slip if necessary. And eventually you'll be using this to access the patient chart data as we evolve the system towards that. The, the screen layout will change based on your state, whether you're active, waiting, or away. Uh, in the waiting state, the next patient to be seen uh, will be displayed on the screen for you to uh, at least be aware of who that patient's going to be. Um, there'll also be a list of all the waiting patients of the same type. So if you're the dental chair, all the dental waiting patients that haven't been seen by anybody who might be in other lines are available for you to look at. You can scroll through that and click on any of those patients. And uh, depending on how you're collaborating with your colleagues, you can select one of those patients instead of the one that is uh, you know, scheduled for your station on the monitors. That said, you may not want to do that because parents and patients will have an expectation as to where they are in line and clicking on other patients and selecting them will sort of, you know, cause them to become confused because they weren't the one that was selected next for your station. Um, but we recognize that that may be a useful function, so you can do it if you need to. Um, in any event, click on the check-in button to check the patient in and that will transition the station to active. And again, that will cause the TV monitors to show you as busy, active, and green color will be used to indicate which patient is currently in the chair. Um, here's the waiting state. The, the child on the left is the one that, when, if and when the check-in button is clicked, will be the one attributed to your chair. Um, on the right, you see two lists, one with active patients um, showing who's a dental patient that's sitting in a chair already, and the waiting patients. And there's a checkbox at the bottom that you can click. If you want to see more than just dental patients, you want to see all the patients that are waiting for care in the clinic, you can click on that checkbox and that waiting patients list will show all of them. Um, by default though, we just want to see who's, who the ortho patients are since we're an ortho chair. So only ortho chair patients are displaying by default. Um, so in the active state, the, the patient medical history will be displayed by default. Um, again, we're going to change the state of the screen to when we go into active state, and it's going to look a little bit different than waiting state. Um, you're going to uh, see the medical history. You can review it, make any changes. If you make changes, a save button will appear and you'll be prompted. Um, you can also look at the routing slip and view it, edit it as, as required. And there's icons on the left that allow you to switch between the medical history and the routing slip. And, and if there's additional functionality based on your station and you know the, the kind of chart data we're keeping, um, for example, dental, we might have you know uh, a color chart or something for, their, for coloring teeth. Um, that functionality will also be in the left-hand column and available. Um, so here's the default active state. Um, the, the key things to look at are on the left, these are the applications you have access to. On the right is the currently selected uh, application. In this case, it's medical history. You can scroll through that medical history, edit it as you like. Um, the button bar at the bottom has a checkout button that you can use to check out the patient when you're done seeing that patient. Uh, let's talk a little bit about editing the medical history. Um, you, you can click on any field you like. If it's a text field, a keyboard will display and allow you to type in changes. If it's a switch, the switch will stay, change state from being on or off. There might be other widgets based on the type of the field. Uh, for medical history, we don't do patient state of birth, but um, it's possible that we might want to record a date of some kind, like a, a last surgery date or something, um, we might use a specific widget for entering calendar dates. Um, we, we provide common defaults such as uh, the gestation length, birth weight, things that might be typical. For example, the, the easy one is a nine month gestation. That'll be the default. Um, these have been 
um, edited by registration. Um, if you see something you don't like, change it. Um, the, the health questions were defaulted to the expected common values, um, typical values based on, on uh, advice that we got from specialists in the field. Um, things like, you know, first date of sitting, first date of talking, that sort of thing. Um, if, it, if it's not right or you question the patient, you want to change it, go ahead. Um, when it comes to the medical medications, like current al allergy medications, we have the entire FDA drug database in there. So any drug you try to type in, it'll probably be there. Um, when done making changes to the medical history, hit the save button. Again, here's the screen showing the medical history editing functionality. And uh, right now we're not seeing any changes because there's no save button. Um, if there were changes, a save button would appear to the right of the checkout button. The routing slip. Um, in most cases, you're not gonna change this. Um, the exception for us will be ENT which will always change this because they're the ones that are going to build the um, routing slip for the cleft patients, both the, the new clefts and the returning clefts. Um, on the routing slip editor, we see two columns. One has available stations. These are stations which um, are not in the routing slip currently, and the patient has not been there already. So if they've already been to dental, it won't show up as a, an available station. And the current routing slip, and those are stations that the patient is still scheduled to visit based on the category they were assigned or the assignments that were made by ENT. To change the routing slip, just press on an item, hold it down, wait a couple seconds, it'll change state. You can drag it from one list to the other. And we'll see that in the demo later. And then click on save to save any changes. Here, here's a walkthrough of, of uh, taking x-ray from the available stations list and moving it to the current routing slip. So what you'll do here is you'll click on x-ray and hold your button down and then it'll change state slightly to indicate that it's selected and then you can drag it over with your finger keeping your finger pressed down on it until you're approximately over the current routing slip um, and then you drop it and then it'll become a part of the current routing slip and you'll notice that a save button shows up at the bottom of the screen um, unless you hit save those changes won't be committed so click on save to save the routing slip after you're satisfied with your changes in the active state you can check out a patient by clicking on the checkout button and if there's any data to be saved you've modified the medical history but didn't save it or you've modified the routing slip but not saved it you'll be prompted to save those uh, you'll then also be asked with a dialogue to select a return to clinic duration and, uh, and offered a chance to enter some comments if you like. And then once the patient is checked out, the application will go to the waiting state and the next patient to be seen will display on your tablet. And so we circle back to the point where you'll check in the next patient, look at their chart, make changes, check out, so on. So here's the checkout uh, dialogue. Um, Click on the appropriate return to duration uh, or, or return in duration. For example, if the, you know you want them to come back in six months, click on the return in six months button. Um, when that patient shows up six months from now, we will automatically put them into uh, your station in the routing slip when they're registered. Um, so that, that's the that's the benefit of selecting a. Uh, uh, return to uh, uh, or return in uh, uh, radio button here and then click the checkout button to check out. The final functionality that you have with the station application currently is the ability to go away. Uh, you can put that station in a way state when you're in the waiting state. Uh, it doesn't make sense to go away when a patient's in the chair so if you're seeing a patient you're currently active finish up with that patient, check them out, and then you can go to the away state. Uh, you'll, you'll do this if you plan to be away for any length of time, for example, to go eat lunch. Uh, this will cause the station to display as away on the TV screens. And it's, an, it's a way of telling the runners, don't bring a patient to me. Uh, 
click on the away button to go away, select the amount of time you need, and then this time will dis be displayed as a return time on the TV monitors. Um, the away button, as you can see, is in the lower right hand corner of the screen. Click on that, this dialog will come up. Um, here the station is indicated that they're going to return in 30 minutes and uh, clicking the away button will put you in the away state. This is what it will look like. You'll see that the state in the upper left hand corner is showing away and the time you're scheduled to return is 4.32 p.m. Uh, you can come back early, you can come back late, it's really up to you, but patients and then the rest of the staff will be uh, at least thinking you're going to be back by about 4.30 here. When you come back to the station, there's a button in the lower right hand corner, uh, return, click on that button, it'll put you into the waiting state, it'll show you the next patient to uh, uh, check in, the runner will likely bring that patient up. Uh, the monitors will show your station as being back in the waiting state. And we just described that uh, briefly again. When you're done, click on the return button. You'll go to the waiting state and the TV monitors will show you as being in the waiting state and the runners will use this as a key to bring another patient to you. If you're ready for uh, the next patient. Again, here's the return button in the lower right-hand corner. Reporting problems. Uh, software's not perfect, as we all know. Uh, if you have trouble signing in, uh, find a board member or area leader, uh, and we'll try to help you with your username or password. We can take care of it at the clinic. We'd rather you know your username and password, however, um, we're, we're likely going to be busy with other problems, so please take care of getting an account on our volunteer site, registering for our clinics, and bring your username and password down with you to sign up on the tablets. But again, if you have problems, let us know. We'll, we'll help you out. Um, if the network's down for some reason, we, we have a new network. It's all reliable. We're not using outside internet connections for this, so... It's very unlikely we're going to have network problems, but if we do, you'll see messages indicating failures to save data, um, failures to connect, and so on. Find a board member or area leader for help. We're probably already on top of it, but please raise your hand and let us know you're seeing problems so we can take care of it. Application crashes might occur. If that happens. Uh, you're likely going to be able to restart the application and just continue. Um, if it's a persistent problem, Please let us know immediately so we can get up there and take a look. Um, but re-logging in, reselecting your station, this should put you back where you were when the crash occurred. Um, or at least the data that you've saved up to that point should still be available because we store that on a server. It's not stored in the tablet. So uh, just continue on with your work. Um, and uh, if the patient's, you know, the station's in the away state, it'll still be in the away state. If the station's active, it'll still be active. If the station's waiting, it'll still be waiting. Um, and then report the problem to us with as much detail as you can so that we can investigate and fix the problem. Next up is a short demo. We'll go through all of the steps involved with um, signing a patient in, signing them out, editing the routing slip, viewing, editing the medical history, uh, also show how to go away for lunch and come back and uh, following that uh, uh, we'll conclude this presentation so here's the monitor and it's showing that ENT is currently waiting for a patient that patient is highlighted in yellow and its ID is 23 so what we're going to do is uh, flip back to the desktop here in a second and launch the station application, which is the application this presentation is all about. So the station application icon is on the lower right here. We click on it, splash screen will show. We're going to log in using a test username and password. When we sign in, we uh, select ENT1, which is our station. And we see that patient 23 
is being presented to us as the next patient to work with. Now we can go scroll around the waiting patients and click on various ones as we're doing here. Uh, but 23 is basically the patient we want to take because that's the one that the, is at the, at the front of the line. We click check in and now we have the patient checked in. Let's go back and take a look at the monitor app and see if it's changed the status of the EMT1 station to indicate that the patient's been checked in. When we get there, we should see that EMT1 is showing green as it is, and uh, patient 23 is the patient that's in the chair. So, returning to the station app, uh, go through and make some changes to the medical history. Notice that the save button comes on when we make changes. Change the uh, first month of crawling to seven from nine. And we're gonna add medications. This is current medications. Notice we typed TY and Tylenol showed up. Click add and update. And we're gonna add penicillin here as a allergy medication. Again, add, then update. Now we try saving. It says there's some problems. Let's scroll back up. Wherever there's an invalid field, you'll see a red checkbox. You can click on that box to find out what you need to do to fix it. Here we have three pounds, which is pretty small. They meant kilograms, so we changed to kilograms. Um, the other problem is the pregnancy duration was too short. We're gonna change it to nine, click save, and we've updated the medical history. Next up is the routing slip. Um, we're going to make a few changes add surgery screening, we're gonna add audiology to the routing slip by dragging them from the available stations column over and then we're gonna remove x-ray. We click save to save those changes. Now we're checking the patient out. We click return in three months, hit the checkout button and the next patient in line is displayed for us to select. And we'll go back and take a look again to see if uh, ENT is showing the right information. You notice it's showing 23 is active. It takes one pass through both languages that we display before the actual lines update. So now we're back to English. We're going to turn, turn around and go back to ENT1 again. And you can see that patient 25 is the one that's waiting. So we've had a really good morning and it's time to go to lunch. So we are going to click on the away button, return in 30 minutes, and we're now in the away state. Let's go back and see what the monitor screens are showing for ENT1. We're going to flick through rapidly on the tablet here to get to ENT1. There's dental, there's x-ray. and ENT1. You see the blue status. It's saying that we're going to return at 1127. It's 1057. So that's 30 minutes. Patients will know and the runners will know not to expect any activity until you're back. Click on return to come back. 25 still the next patient. Click check in to check them in. And then we can make changes to the routing slip, medical history, or do nothing if there's no changes we want to make. Here we're, again, fiddling with the routing slip. Take a look at the medical history. Make some small changes, save them. Time to check out the patient. We're going to return in six months. Click check out. And the next patient that is waiting in line will show up. Thank you very much for your time. We hope that this system uh, serves your needs as volunteers for our clinics. If there's uh, questions, you can find out more information by visiting our website at thousandsmiles.org. Our wiki uh, should at some point have more information uh, related to the EMR and we're happy to answer any questions. You can use the email addresses that are 
in your volunteer registration email to send questions in or just find us at the clinic and ask and again thank you for your time and uh, we hope this system helps you do your job better <laughs>